Hello Opal's users. In this tutorial I'm going to cover the Mark Editor tool. The Mark Editor is used in those instances where you cannot find a Mark record for a book using Z import. Maybe the book is locally published, it's a small no-name press, whatever. It's just not out there in the world of Mark records and you need to create it from scratch. To find the Mark Editor you'll go to the Items tab, choose Mark Editor. There's a few notes that I'm going to bring up regarding the templates in the Mark Editor. The first thing is the empty template. The empty template acts as a gateway for all records that you use Z import for. As you import records, they go through the empty template as a gateway before you finish cataloging the book. Please do not renumber, rename, or delete the empty template. In fact, if you're going to do anything to it, you might want to ask for some help, and there's really not much you can do. You'll notice that at my library I have a location. The library is split up with DVDs in one area, graphic novels, reference. And as I catalog, I might like to have, if I bring in a new graphic novel using Z import, I'd like to have the graphic novel location be ready and uh, ready for me to choose as I'm cataloging this newly imported book. So really the only thing you need to do ever in an empty template would be I'm going to click it here, I'm going to click Edit Template, and please use caution with the empty template. Anything you would do to the bibliographic portion of the empty template will not have no effect on items that you're bringing in using Z Import. There is one instance though, and that's the holding record, and you see that I have a subfield C, which is my shelving location. And because I used my location authority tool, I don't have to type these in. So if you need to do anything in the empty template, that would just, just be to simply add subfield C. I'm going to remove it. And now I'll show you how to add it. So if you're a brand new site and you've not added anything and you are using locations, you might like the empty template holding record portion only to have a subfield C. So I'll put my cursor next to the JSH and I'm going to the far right at the bottom and I'm going to click add subfield. I will pin it, put in a lowercase c. That's the shelving location and here's the different locations that I've defined in my locations tool. So this way every time I bring in a book using Z import if it's a graphic novel, a DVD, a reference or any other location I, I don't have to add the subfield C each time. It'll be there and the list will come up. I'm going to save the empty template. I'm not renumbering it. I'm going to keep it the same name empty. So I'm done with the empty template. All I did was add a subfield C for location. Now I'm going back to the items tab, back to the mark record, or the mark editor, excuse me, and let's look at the books template. Again, these are used when you can't find an item out in the world of Mark Records using the Library of Congress, the schools, your union, whatever. The first thing I'm going to do though is edit the book template. I'm clicking, I put a check mark next to the book template, I'm clicking edit, and why I'm editing it, this template is so that as I'm cataloging books that I couldn't find, and hopefully you won't have to do this very often, I will have certain fields that are already in the record and I won't have to think about adding them. So I'm going down the mark record, and you'll see it's all blank. It's a template. I'm going to go to the 300 field, and I'm just going to click next to the subfield C and add a data field. I'm going to add a 490. This is a series statement. So if you have different series in your library, you'll want to have a 490 series. And while we're here, it's a good idea to add a subfield V for the numbering of the series. So maybe you'll have um, an I Survive series, and it's in the, it's I Survive maybe number 22, so that would go in the V. And as you'll see, it's the volume number sequential designation for the series. And then subfield A is the series statement, I Survive, Babysitter's Club, and the like. Okay, I'm now going to add a, another field, so I click Add Data Field. My cursor is blinking right here, so these will be numerically in order. I'm clicking Add Data Field, and I'm going to click a 505. I'm putting in a 505 field, 
which is a formatted contents note. This is where you may put in short stories that are in a collection or poems that are in a collection. Maybe you have a book, The Best Poems of 2017, and you could list the poems in there separated by a space and a hyphen or the like. And if a student or teacher was to look for The Raven by Poe and it was in that collection, it would come up because you had it in the 505. So the 505 is a very good field. It's called the Formatted Contents Note, and it's used to add short stories, plays, poems, things like that. I'm going to add another field. So I'm clicking Add Data Field. I'm adding a 520 field. 520 is a great field. It's a summary note. Um, this book is about a little girl who grew up during the Civil War on a banana farm. All those words would be indexed in the subjects so that if a teacher was looking for books on the Civil War or books on a little girl or banana or farm, all those words in a summary note are searchable and a summary note is nice because it shows the users of your library what the book is about. So it's a nice field to have. We've got the 520, so we've added a 490, a 505, a 520. I'm going to add another field called the 586 tag and this is the awards note. So if the book is a Caldecott or a Red Clover Award or whatever it might be, it's really good to have this this field because a teacher, a student, a patron of the library may look for awards book. Perhaps they want to see what Caldecott books you have. If you have these notes in the record, you're all set. Again, this is a template, so I'm not typing any data in, but at least we're setting your template up so that you don't forget about these fields. Um, now I'm there's the 650s. These are typically uh, used for Library of Congress or, or authorized subject headings. I always find it's a good idea for librarians to add 690 fields, which are locally created subject headings. So I put my cursor right next to the X, and I'm going to, this is, I do this so that the fields are in order, numerical order. I'm clicking Add Data Field, and I'm going to type a 690. Again, a 690 is a free text field where you can put in pretty much anything you like. If you have a book uh, for little kids and one of the subject headings says automobiles, and you think that the young folks might be more likely to search for cars, then you could put the word cars in a 690. Uh, you can even string the words out. You could put cars, space, hyphen, space, trucks, tractors. You could put that all on one line, or you can add it on different 690 lines. It's really a, a judgment call on your part. I'm going to add one more 690 to my template. All right. Now we have a 700 field. A 700 field is an added entry personal name if there's two authors or an illustrator that would be in the 700 field so what we've done is we've gone to the books template and everything at the top was good this is where you would put your ISBN the author the title the subtitle the publication place name of the publisher the date physical description information series statement very important especially in schools the students seem to know their series quite well. 505 to add plays, poems, short stories. Uh, there is one funny note though. If you have the thousand best poems ever written, not so sure you would want to fill in this field with a thousand poems. That'd be quite a challenge. 520 for summary, 586 awards note, 650 uh, subject headings, typically Library of Congress type or Sears. And 690, I've added two of these locally created subject headings. You can put anything you like in there. By the way, it's best to capitalize uh, words. It looks better. And finally, there's a 700 tag for added author, illustrator, and the like. So I'm going to save this template. So I'm clicking Save. I'll keep it number two. And I'm going to add books with added fields. Actually, I'll make it book with added fields. This just tells me that I've been in the template and I've added additional fields for my template. Alrighty. I am going to do one more thing to my template. I'm going to the holding portion and I'm going to add a subfield C 
for my location. So I'm putting my cursor right next to the B. I will go down to the bottom and click Add Subfield, put a C in, and then that's where I would get my location. So it's not a bad idea to have that in your books template either. I'm going to save this once again, number two, book with added fields. I'll say OK. So I've edited my template, and now if I like, I can use that template to catalog books that I could not find using Z Import. So to do that, you would go to Items, Mark Editor, and once the Mark Editor comes up, you'll see different templates. I didn't adjust any of these other templates, but you can open them up, click Edit Template, and add additional fields or take fields away, whatever you like. Uh, the PDF document is used to catalog PDFs, uh, documents that you may have, uh, or you may like to catalog, historical documents and the like that you've turned into a PDF file. They can be cataloged, and that would be on a separate. We have documentation on our help uh, site for PDF cataloging. Mainly though we find that people need to catalog books. So if you can't find the title in Z import you would click right here and you would click new record. Remember before I edited the template just to have all the fields set up. Now I'm pretending I'm going to catalog a book so I put a check mark here, new record, and now it's basically fill in the blank time. So when the template comes up uh, I'm just going to go through this just briefly. I would highly recommend you put in the ISBN. If there is an ISBN on the back of the book and it's a barcode ISBN, you can scan it with a scanner. The cataloging source you can leave untouched. The main entry, last name, comma, first name. Here's your title, the remainder of the title, uh, statement of responsibility if you choose to put it in place of publication, all the fields here. So you would basically fill these fields in. Uh, oftentimes people will use something like Amazon and they'll find a book in Amazon and they'll copy the summary statement off of Amazon or wherever else you might find it and paste it into the summary note. There's your awards note. So basically you would fill in all these fields or the fields that you choose to fill in. Then you would go to the holding record and you would put in your call number if it had a prefix, you'd put the prefix here. I already have prefixes set up. Uh, here would be your FIC or your Dewey number or your Library of Congress number. Here's your cutter. If you had a suffix to the, a set of books, maybe the four-volume set of Thomas Jefferson's Life, you could put in V period four or uh, the like. So you can put in a call number suffix. Some people also use it for genres. And then you would have to put in a barcode and I have mine set up already but you could use any barcode you like uh, and scan it in and then a price if you like. So that is a brief review of how to use the Mark Editor in Opals again which is found under the Items tab. If you need further addition, additional help please contact Opal Support and we're glad to help you out. Thanks.